It ain't Zada. I don't got Zada. Oh, no? Nah. I sleep somewhere else. Let's go to Fulmer, no? I got a big ass storage unit. Yeah, we could do it right here. You got another chair? How corrupt are the CEOs around here? Niggas corrupt as fuck, you heard? Still to this day. Now they got young officers telling me. 23. They got officers your age, nigga, 21. When I was there, the niggas was grown men. Horrible, like you know you're going into hell once you smell that smell. What does it smell like? Oh, it smell like the worst sewer that never ever been cleaned in more than a thousand years, bro. That smells horrible. Then once you get on the bridge, it's like the smell stay in your clothes, it stay in your nose for like a couple of days, all that. You know what I'm saying? So I got the feeling of all of that again, and then when I got actually to go through the intake and the medical process, and you don't, you don't even get a cell or a bed until like three days later. You going through medical and all this other bullshit, and it's in the pens. You never seen on the news where you see all the people crowded, you sleeping there. That's how it really be. You know, crime don't pay, bro. My little brother just got 10 years in the feds two days ago, bro. He just did six years in, in the state. He was home for what, a year and some change. Messed up his whole life. It's over. I mean, it's not over, but you messed up your whole life. What, what is that feeling? Is it worse going back than when it was going to jail the first time? Not really, because you already know what to expect. If you're, if you're, if you're young, if you're a teenager going in there, you already know what to expect. You know, when you get to the, if you, Going in there as an adult is a little different. They're not as wild as the young adolescents, you know what I'm saying? But going back in there, if you've already been there, you know what to expect. So you're going to know what you got to do and how to move and how to, you know, carry yourself. What, what did jail taught you that's made you stronger mentally? Um, jail, jail's taught me a lot mentally um, to, like, basically never give up. That's the main thing, no matter what situation you're in. The mental, like I said, the mental part of, like, of being in a place like that is like the most, it could be the most strongest part you have that you have of yourself or the most weakest part because I didn't see kids hang themselves. I didn't see, I seen it. I seen it all. Like, you know what I'm saying? Sad shit. Like, I mean, and it's because they couldn't, they, they meant to stay, they broke down. They couldn't, they couldn't deal with the extortion. They couldn't deal with the oppression. They couldn't deal with being beat up every day. They couldn't, you know what I'm saying? And, they just broke down and they end up hanging themselves. I've seen it plenty of times. What's the funniest shit you saw in jail? The funniest shit? That's just mad funny shit I've seen. I mean, it, I can't really call it funny because it's hurting other people, you know what I'm saying? That's, but, that's what makes it funny. Yeah, it's, I mean, I've seen people get on the wall and do the Beyonce. <laughs> what? Yeah, I've seen people get on the wall. Back when I was in there, they used to like, had like a, a specific day for like, it was called the violation day. Like if you ain't do what you was told to do throughout the week or whatever, violate, once violation day come, you gotta take the violations, you feel me? And you can't do nothing about it or they gonna, niggas is gonna smoke you. So I see niggas get on the wall, throw the diamond up on the wall like this and take rib shots. Or I see niggas get on the wall like this and do the Beyonce meaning shake their ass. Like How much do you blame on a, uh that on the individual and how much you blame that on the system? Going in and out and killing themselves in jail and the, the whole, the um, element, is, that, is that the system's fault or is that the, the criminal's fault? Like I said, if you don't want to be in there, if you don't want to find yourself in any of them situations that could go on in them type of places, don't commit crime. It's that simple. It's that simple, bro. Like, that's what people don't understand. And Do you feel like you didn't have any other option? Who, me? Yeah. When, what, when I was what? When you were, uh, Committing crime. Yeah. I mean, I knew I had an option. I just didn't give a fuck. I wanted to do it my way, basically, which was the fast and easy way. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's just what it was at the time. I ain't no guidance. Well, how much do you blame that on your environment? And how much do you blame it on yourself? Shit, I blame it a lot on my environment, you heard? Because, you know, it's like they say in the hoods, monkey see, monkey do. And then, you know, if you got older family members that was already into the streets, all my life I've been, I'm saying, so into you that. you a bad person? Nah. I think I was a bad person. I, I really do think I was before. But, you know, like I said, as I got older, as I've seen things, as I experienced things and you know, went through stuff in my life, I feel like I got better because I, you know, I, I'm still to this day making changes, you know what I'm saying? Trying to become a better person. 
But yeah, I think now I think I'm a good person. Like, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of stuff that I do now that I would have never did a few years ago. I have to. I got two daughters to live for, and they look up to me. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, that's who I live for now. It's not about me no more. Would you fight for your country? If I was given a chance to, hell yeah, I would. You would? Yep. So you, you don't you I, really have like a hate for the system and the government? Not no more. I, you, 